the reasons. That will give Khalid a chance. If, if, you, if, you, are a, if you, are, you are a Muslim, you may decide not to do that. However, in countries like Britain and France, most of us are not Muslims. And we do not believe in Muhammad as the founder of, of the, for any faith that we follow. People are Christians, atheists, all sorts of things. You cannot expect, and this is a crucial thing, Muslims should not expect non-Muslims to abide by their own belief systems. You can yourself decide, you as a Muslim do not want to depict Muhammad. But the idea that is coming along in Europe at the moment is a growing idea that people who are not Muslims, who do not believe in Muhammad, who do not follow Islam, are also to be, um, uh, have to obey the rules of Islamic blasphemy. And Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are here again with another video from Douglas Murray, where he was interviewed by Al Jazeera on the Charlie Addo massacre. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. As we all know, Douglas always stands for the truth. He's not afraid to say the truth. So let's check this out. Go. To bring the guests into the discussion here in the studio with me is Khalid El Bey, a political cartoonist based in Doha. Joining us from Paris is Catherine Gilliardi, a French journalist and social commentator. And completing the panel in London is Douglas Murray, associate director at the Henry Jackson Society. Good to have you with us. If I could start with Khalid here in the studio. You're a cartoonist yes. and a Muslim. Yes. Do the two mix? They mix. How? There's a lot of us. What, what, do you, what do you paint cartoons of? Many outside the Muslim world are asking, can Muslims find a sense of humor? We do. We, we, uh, of course, we have, to go through, we have to go through hoops to uh, you know, uh, avoid censorship in so many levels. You know, we go through censorship in so many levels, social censorship uh, because of you know, the, the, the social religious factors in the region and as well as government imposed censorships that you know we also have to dodge every time and of course self-censorship you support what charlie Hebdo did the characters i condemn I, I condemn what the attack that happened mm -hmm. and i can i condemn uh, uh the, the the extremists for you know this 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 horrific uh attack but at the same time i'm not a fan of of of, of the publication I never was. I, I thought it was quite racist, actually. And why, why did you find it racist? Uh, they're just they're just feeding into uh, the, the 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 mainstream media, uh, pro, you know, prototypes of people. You know, like profiles of of of, of uh, eth ethnic groups or you know, they're not. It's not smart cartoons. Any, everybody can make a gag. Anybody can make a gag. But it's 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 quite. Um, what, what the, the smart thing to do is how to deliver that without um, offending anybody and at the same time even if you're offending anybody what is what is your message it's not it's not just a joke for the sake of a joke right right okay let's bring in uh, our London guest into the discussion at this point do you think this attack will underscore the message of the far right in Europe at least of the incompatibility of Islam and the West or Western values that's a pretty atrocious question, if I may say so. We're about 24 hours away from 12 people being gunned down in a newspaper office in the centre of Paris in a European city uh, because they offended, allegedly, Islamic blasphemy laws, blasphemy laws which France, Britain and other European countries do not have and do not believe in and do not follow. And for you to turn the question immediately, not on the people who've been massacred because of asserting their rights as European French citizens, but onto the alleged uh, uh, terrible discrimination of the French is really quite despicable. Sir, I didn't ask you anything about discrimination of the French. Let me repeat the question. You went straight on. You went straight on to. You went straight on to the alleged let, backlash. Let, 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 let me let me ask you the question again, in case you didn't understand it. Do you think this attack? We are in our news bulletins talking in more detail about the actual attack. What you were invited to discuss in this show are the implications of what might follow the attack. Will it underscore yeah, and, the and message of those who, who say there is an incompatibility between Western values and Muslim values? 
No, you, you, you want to paint the narrative which you think turns immediately, not from the attackers, but I on want the French an answer, society, sir, that's which all. you would like to portray. I'm giving you my answer, so why don't you listen to it? Which you would like to portray as somehow anti-Muslim or anti-Islamic or anything like this. Let's start from the fact that 12 people were massacred because European citizens asserted their right, which they have every right to do, to draw Mohammed just as they have the right to draw any other historical figure, which they believe in or don't believe in, it doesn't matter. They have that right. I, I, I don't think at this stage whether, you know, a discussion of the far right in France or anything like that is really the point. The point is people were killed and gunned down for doing their job as journalists and cartoonists in a free society. OK, let's try with our guest joining us from France. Perhaps she would like to address the question. Do you think there is a message coming out of this, of the incompatibility of, of Muslim and Western values? It seems our guest in London doesn't want to uh, tackle that. Perhaps you would. I think that's what the killers would like us to believe. <laughs> They're French. They were, they were brought up in this country. And they made this choice to become what they've become. They've killed a policeman, for example, who was also from an Algerian background like them, French citizen as well. So I think this is not the issue, and this should never be the issue. This is the issue they want us to address, and they want to make that statement that there is an incompatibility between two worlds. I think they are extremists and I think we should not let other extremists on the other side who believe that as well, like uh, our extremists here from the right wing or extreme right wing, uh, who believe that there is an incompatibility between an Islamic world and, an, and a Western world. I think we should never allow this, uh, this question to be put. Let's bring it back to the studio here. Um, one thing which you mentioned to me just before we started was you're surprised at some of the reaction uh, that has developed since this, uh, this terrible attack that's happened on the offices of Charlie Hebdo. Tell us a little bit about how you see what message you're taking away as a cartoonist, as a Muslim, about the compatibility of values or incompatibility. I'm, an, uh, I'm Sudanese. I speak Arabic, but I do most of my cartoons either in English or no comment because I'm trying to bridge that gap. I'm trying to, uh, uh, trying to reach out to the people in the West because of this incapability and capacity uh, issue. I want to uh, show them that we are, we are the same. We're going through the same problems as you are. We are uh, uh, affected by uh, extremists just like you are. We, are. we are as much scared and we are the biggest victims of extremist attacks in the world. So I, 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 because of, you know, mainstream media does not tackle these issues and, and, and the, all they focus on is the differences. They don't focus on how we're, how we're, how we're all alike. We all grew up in the, in, in the same world and how we should, what we should know about each other and what we should uh, uh, respect about each other's cultures and know about each other. So we can live along, like just you know, make a middle line and 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 and, and walk together, basically, and um, instead of just pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this this is this is what I should this is what I think should should happen, and this is what I think should, you know, w we should all work towards. All right, thank you very much, Douglas in London. No doubt there will be a lot of thought as to how to how policy should proceed going forward. What do you think the policy should be? What are the, the practical policy lessons learned from this attack? Well, there are no practical policy uh, lessons learned. People are still mourning the dead and uh, identifying bodies. Um, the thing that is going to happen in the weeks and days ahead is that people are going to have a set of questions. The first will be obvious security questions, simply about how it was that two people were able to go into the office in Paris with Kalashnikovs and gun people down in cold blood. That will certainly be a part of it. There's a technical security discussion to be had. There's also a discussion about wider society and, and what its reaction should be and all that sort of thing. But really the most febrile and important discussion at the moment is the one that the free press is having across Europe, which is, uh, which is whether or not uh, they will stand up and retain the right to do what we in Europe and free peoples have the right to do, which is to draw what we like. And the key message from this really can't be emphasized enough because, you know, 
uh, your, your guest in, in, in Doha is a cartoonist. He knows very well that he can't draw a cartoon of Mohammed there. Even if he wanted to, he wouldn't because his life would be anyways. at great risk. I wouldn't, and, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, do that. You wouldn't anyway, do it. Sir. No. And one of the reasons, no, it's, it's, and one I, of the I think, reasons I think, you wouldn't sir, do it. I think, okay. sir, I, Maybe I it's think, not just because. Let, let can I just see. finish my point? Uh, okay, finish One your of the point, reasons, then we'll give Khalid the chance. You, if, you are a, if you, are, you are a Muslim, you may decide not to do that. However, in countries like Britain and France, most of us are not Muslims. And we do not believe in Muhammad as the founder of, of the, any faith that we follow. People are Christians, atheists, all sorts of things. You cannot expect, and this is a crucial thing, Muslims should not expect non-Muslims to abide by their own belief systems. You can yourself decide. You as a Muslim do not want to depict Muhammad. But the idea that is coming along in Europe at the moment is a growing idea that people who are not Muslims, who do not believe in Muhammad, who do not follow Islam, are also to be um, uh, have to obey the rules of Islamic blasphemy. And right. in Europe okay. at the moment, okay. that you've is the that, big debate. You've made that point, Douglas. You wanted to go ahead, Khalid. You had a comeback on that. <laughs> you were it's... saying that you couldn't draw a cartoon on the Prophet Muhammad, even if he wanted I, As I explained, I, I wouldn't draw a cartoon of Prophet Muhammad because of, of, of these issues, because this is how we grew up, because this is our culture. We do not do that. But in, 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 in the argument about freedom of speech, I mean, yes, the West does have freedom of speech, and yes, you should, have, you should fight to keep that freedom of speech. I, I accept that totally, and, and I believe in that, right, as a cartoonist and as a human being. And for me, as a, car as a cartoonist who does not have that freedom to that extent, Right? But at the same time, if you have all these rights, if you have all and this I power, where, uh, why, why, why would you want to use it to, to, to upset uh, uh, a whole you know, uh, population? Because, because uh, life, why because why would you want to do that? Life is upsetting all we the time. We already live in a troubled world. We already live in a troubled world, sir. Right? No we, we already, that. we already let's get beyond have, that we have, we already have wars. Get on to okay. the substance of it. All right, let's sir, get on to the Douglas, substance of it. Douglas, don't interrupt him now. We gave you a chance. Cartoonist. Douglas, just, just give him a chance quickly, to finish. Every single cartoonist, every single cartoonist in Britain and in Europe is able to, and many of them do, make jokes around Christmas time and so on about the Virgin Mary, three wise men and so on. We accept that as the right. What Charlie Hebdo was trying to do, okay. and what others have asserted the right All to right. do, is to you've treat Islam exactly as you... they treat every other religion. Okay, you've made that point, and the shooting, of course, has been uh, widely described as an attack on freedom of speech, as we're hearing uh, from our panel here. France prides itself on the right of freedom of speech, but even that does have certain limits. The Gaysot Act, for example, makes denial of the Holocaust a criminal offence. The Pleven Act prohibits incitement to hatred, discrimination or slander based on race or gender. A uh, 2003 law made it a crime to insult the French flag or national anthem and the country's public health code makes it illegal to present a favourable view of drug use. Catherine, is there a place for a discussion about the inclusiveness of Europe, of how far Europe should go in being inclusive or, as Douglas would present it, how far Europe shouldn't be asked to compromise its principles when it comes to accommodating the sentiments of Muslims. Charlie Hebdo was sued uh, for the caricatures of Mohammed in 2007. And then editor of Charlie Hebdo, Philippe Val, said, we're not talking about belief, we're talking about ideologies. Is radical Islam, um, Islam used as an excuse for killing a belief or an ideology. If we are talking about ideology, there is a freedom of speech in this country, as in many others, and any ideology can be challenged, can be criticized in many ways. You can do it by fiction, you can do it by a report, you can do it investigation, you can do it with a cartoon. And this is what we're talking about. I think we should not mix up everything. You talked about the Holocaust. The Holocaust is a fact that historians worldwide have established as a fact, meaning they've used scientific methods, methods of academics, to prove that it has actually happened. Denying the Holocaust is an ideology. And this is not, should I believe it's happened or not? It has happened. It's a scientific fact. 
If you challenge that, then it's an ideology. And if it does prompt hatred, yes, hatred is um, challenged, not only challenged, but by law forbidden. And Charlie Hebdo was sued by Muslim associations in 2007 uh, for those Muslim, uh, sorry, those Mohammed caricatures on this basis, on hated, hatred, sorry, prompted on religious grounds. And Charlie Hebdo, I, I didn't agree with what all that happened. I mean, I'm not a fan of Charlie Hebdo, but they went to court and it was decided that yes, on the grounds of ideology, they are allowed to challenge radical Islam. Uh, not Islam, radical Islam. Charlie Hebdo is used to having um, trials. They have a budget for that, like every other satirical newspapers worldwide. And they have been sued 14 times by Catholic, extreme right Catholics, only once by Muslim associations. So, you know, let's not mix up everything. Are we talking again about an ideology? And if yes, and I think we are here, men who kill because they don't agree with your ideas, they make a statement. It's not in the belief of Islam to do that. I don't think so. So in that sense, yes, every ideology should be challenged in a world where the freedom of speech of the press is respected. Where do you draw the line between radical Islam and what is Islam? Is that something that Europe is still grappling with? What is considered legitimate between radical dis Islam? debate okay. about radical Islam and what is considered uh, hate speech against Muslims when you have thousands of rallies, rallies of thousands of people uh, saying, you know, calling basically that there is no place for Muslims and Muslim values no, in Europe? If I could pick, uh, can sorry, I pick Douglas, you up on that? No, can you, can you let me finish actually my question? When yes, you have thousands I mean, of people I, calling I, for uh, answer, calls yeah. which, which sound very similar to the minds of some for the calls for expulsions of Jews from Europe during uh, the Second World War. Uh, where do you draw the line between what is legitimate debate and what is simply racism when it comes to Islam? Catherine. Okay, maybe we have to work on our vocabulary. When I call it radical Islam, maybe I shouldn't say that. I should just say people who use Islam has an excuse to kill. And you're right, you have fundamentalist Islam, which doesn't mean you're a terrorist. Here we have terrorists, we have fascists even, in the sense that we have had here in Europe before the Second World War and during the war. Fascism is uh, the fact of rejecting everyone that is not like me and that doesn't believe like I do believe. I think the Middle East for now is the first victim of this fascism with what is happening with Daesh. So this is what I mean and maybe you're right, we should work on our vocabulary when we say radical Islam, what do we mean? This is what I mean and this is what most commentators mean in this country and what Charlie Hebdo was challenging is challenging. Uh, it's the use of religion to impose your law on others. Okay. And not only your law, but you condemn <coughs> the others to death because they don't follow your rules. Okay. Uh, this let is me where I draw the line, and it has nothing to do with, with the religious belief. Wonderful. Khalid here in the studio, it's been said uh, and it's been asked, why would you want to impose your values on others? Why would you want to impose your understanding of what is legitimate comedy, what is legitimate discussion on others? Should a person in Europe be asked to abide by your cultural norms? I think that, you know, uh, as, cartoon as a cartoonist myself, I think you have responsibility. You have a responsibility to deliver a message, to ask the right questions in the right form of way. Mm -hmm. this, 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 is, this is what we're trying to do. It's, it's, it's not that I'm imposing something on you. This is, this is you know, I, so I, 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 can, I, can draw, I can draw Prophet Muhammad if I want to. You can't stop me. And it's not about that. It's, 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 it's really about why are you drawing Prophet Muhammad in, in, in that way? I mean, it's, it's fine. You can, you can do it. But what are you getting out of it except for... Uh, you know, pleasing okay. yourself All right. and, make, and, and upsetting you made 20 that, million you made that people. Point. We've only got a couple of minutes left, so I want to bring in Douglas from London. We had a, 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 re a reasonable, I would say, uh, definition there from Catherine Gilliardi in France about what the f perhaps the fight is really against, the fascism of those who believe 
in, in exclusively uh, fighting those who don't agree with their ideas. Would you agree with that definition you mean, and would it apply? You mean, you mean the fascism of radical Islam? I, well, I think Catherine would apply that. I don't want to speak Islam. for her. Yeah. I think she, yeah. she would apply that to I, I think all I forms got that of right. fascism. Yes. Um, sure. Uh, unfortunately, if, if, a, uh, if an impartial viewer were watching your programme, they'd come away with the idea that all Germans and French people are nascent fascists waiting to expel Muslims. Actually, you just painted, for a journalist, it's quite shocking, you just painted a completely uh, inaccurate portrait of what is going on in protests in Germany, uh, which in actual fact, if you look at it, are highly specific. I can, I finish any, my, can I finish no, my let point? Let me correct you on a factual you point. You said I that the demonstrations in Germany... I didn't say all Germans Germany, are all French are looking no, to expel no, Muslims. No, no, but then you decided and to say that the Germans... And I didn't mention a Germans protest in any particular about, country. So now that we got the facts straight, please go biased, ahead. Your incredibly biased portrayal of European citizens starts from your misportrayal of people turning out at protests as being against all Muslims or wanting to expel them. And you, you were to, you, uh, the presenter in Doha, uh, sit in Doha. It really is astonishing. You are painting a picture of Europe which is outrageous. Across the Middle East, uh, uh, car uh, cartoons are published every day, every week, with the most disgusting anti-Semitic propaganda, the most disgusting propaganda in them. And you sit in Doha, a not free society, and smear Germans and French people a mere 24 hours after this. Totalitarian, I've just corrected you. You don't seem to be hearing me. So let me correct. To you again, sorry, sir. Paris. I did not say the words "all Germans or all French are are, are against or uh, calling for the expulsion of Muslims." That never came out of my mouth. I You've said there are protests the in which there have, been, there have been there have been there have been protests by some in Europe, a minority, who are calling for and exclusivity. And they're against Salafists. Do you that, not that, follow that any is, details? Th the German protests are against Salafists. Uh, there I, is a uh, problem in Europe, sir, and the problem is of Islamic fundamentalism. There is now also a secondary problem, which is that many people who do not like the Islamic fundamentalists are objecting to it. I suggest we unite in sorting out the first primary problem in order to also prevent the secondary problem from ever growing. Okay. But we have to portray this accurately. Exactly. And you as a Let's journalist should be doing that. Uh, we are doing that, and I uh, thank you for your participation in this like show. It doesn't sound like it, and it's all well, very well perhaps you could for then... Al Jazeera from Doha to do this, but really. Well, perhaps then, perhaps you would be honest enough to answer the, the basic question I asked you at the beginning I'll of this show. You, do, you, do you believe... I'll tell can you, I, Can sir. I finish the question? Can I, may on. I finish the have question? A go. Thank you. The, do you believe that this, what has happened today is a fringe example of of the behavior of a few Muslims or do you in the far right believe that this is an example of why Muslims are incompatible with European culture I don't I'm not sure if you're talking about honesty and answering the questions and factuality please well, answer let's that. remember of course y y you work for a, a, an unfree media and an unfree state. no I don't I, and however, you want to I'm, I'm sorry I'm, this we're not I going however, to have a discussion I, however, on my media and I, the media however, I work in so I, you're however, avoiding answering the I, question however, you I don't however, want to answer the I question, however, I'm sir. A free man. I will answer it and let me just finish speaking. I will answer it because I'm a free person and a free European in a free society. And I can tell you that the primary problem is people who walk into offices and gun people down. There will be people in Europe, and I hope that they do not grow in number, who will object to that in a particularly unpleasant way. I hope that we all unite in stopping the fascist Islamists who turn up to offices and disgrace the name of their religion and attack I people because of their right to freedom of speech. And I think that's right what we need to focus on. And non -Islamists. This is who we should stop. We should not stop and focus and point fingers. We should stop all extremists. No, you do all need to point fingers. Sir. You need to point all, fingers. All extremists. You need we to we need to point fingers, fingers at all time extremists. Like Unfortunately, don't what we do sir. need don't to do at this point the is end the, the show, I'm afraid, because we are out of time. Islamic Let's thank our uh, panel. We certainly had a lively input there. Thank you very much, Douglas Murray, Catherine Giliardi, and Khalid. You didn't frankly. Wow. What an interesting debate. We can tell this was really, really, really very heated. Wow. And I believe you don't have right not to be offended. You have no right not to be offended when you are living in, uh, in an organized society, in a Western society. By all means, someone is going to say something. You might not be okay with what the person say. And there are better ways of addressing such issue if someone said something and you are not uh 
okay with what the person say instead of resorting to violence you can challenge what the person say by engaging in a dialogue with the person in order to be able to prove your point you can even counter what the person say by coming up with a better idea with a better word instead of resorting to violence and i for one just as douglas murray have said i for one i believe violence have no place uh, in an organized society violence have no place in europe violence have no place in britain if you are not okay with what someone say you, you can challenge the person by coming up with a better idea to counter what the person say by you know proving your point to the person instead of resorting to violence or calling it an hate speech or saying uh the person is becoming islamophobic just because the person is trying to express his freedom of speech and i for one i believe if a society is to flourish if a community is to flourish if a country is to flourish they have to be exchange of ideas they have to be clash of different ideas and i believe the clash of different ideas can help solve a lot of problem can bring solution to a lot of problem so you shouldn't stop people from expressing their freedom of speech you shouldn't resort to violence or try to give the people uh, 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 a threat in order to stop them from expressing their freedom of speech i for one i believe that is totally wrong and just by what the question uh uh, uh, uh it was asking in this debate that do you believe uh islam is not compatible is not compatible or is incompatible with western values i don't believe that i totally believe that that a lot of people who are who are who are muslims that have re that are extremists that are fundamentalists that have tried to you know impose their own belief impose their own culture on on the british people on the people and try to make people accept their own belief i believe i understand that certain values and norms might not be accepted by uh, the muslim society by uh, muslim countries but we all know british british europe uk as a western country they express they embrace freedom of speech and you can't come and impose your own culture on the people because british europe we all we all know it's a free country that embraces everyone to be able to express their freedom of speech, their freedom of expression, freedom of religion. So I believe you have no right not to be offended. And even when you are offended, you have no right to resort to violence. So if you are not okay with what someone said, you can either challenge the person in a debate, engage in a dialogue with the person, try to counter what the person say with a better idea in order to be able to prove your point instead of resorting to violence and for the fact that uh the question saying uh islam is not compatible with british values or islam is incompatible with british values i think everyone have a different answer about that and if you have an answer and you think uh islam is not compatible with british value i think it's better you go live uh in an islam country you go live in a country that they embrace in, in a muslim country that they, uh, they they engage they embrace islam culture they embrace islam tradition they embrace islam value system you can go live in such countries and no one is going to question your belief no one is going to question your action because that is what they are known for because their culture accept that their tradition accept that their value accept that no one is going to question your belief so but if you are living in a western country you are living in europe you are living in british you have to be able to accept the norms you have to be able to accept the culture you have to be able to accept the tradition you have to be able to accept the value system because we all know every country have its own identity and british as a country europe as a country europe europe britain they have their own identity and british identity is embodied in their culture is embodied in their value system is embodied in their tradition so you coming to live in a country you have to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate the people's culture to accommodate the people's belief to accommodate the people's value system you don't have to come with your own culture and try to impose it on the people i believe that is totally unacceptable just by the point douglas murray is talking about that uh islam blasphemy law is known to 
to the Muslims is known to uh, the country, uh, to Islam country, to Muslim countries. But in British, British is a country, uh, UK, Europe, they are free country. Everyone, everyone is free to express their freedom. And you don't have to pick offense and you don't have to be offended. You don't have to resort to it. You don't have to call it an hate speech. You don't have to say someone is becoming an, uh, someone is becoming Islamophobic just because the person is trying to express his or her freedom. I feel that is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. In an organized society, in a Western society, everyone has the right to give their opinion, give their views on certain topic. Everyone has the right. You don't have to resort to violence. If you are not okay with what someone said, you have to counter what the person say with a better idea instead of you resorting to violence. So I don't believe, uh, uh, I don't believe British law. I don't believe British culture is not compatible with Islam law. I believe it's very compatible, but I believe there are a lot of people within the religion within the, the religion that are fundamentalists, that are extremists, that have decided to, you know, hijack those things and decided to resort to violence. So I won't say all, all Muslims are violent. I won't say uh, uh, the problem is from Islam, but I believe they are people that have, you know, tried to use the religion to their own advantage. And, you know, they try to, these people are fundamentalists. These people are extremists. They tend to be easily offended by what someone say, anyone that has a different view apart from what they believe in, they feel those people, those people deserve to die. And I believe that is totally wrong and that should never be accepted in any society. I've really learned a lot just listening to Douglas Murray and listening to every one of the speaker. And I, for one, I believe just like the cartoonists have said, every country has its own culture. You might be in a Muslim country and, you know, certain laws, certain values, certain traditions, certain culture is, is known in that, in that, in that country. You can't come with such law and try to impose it, uh, in a different country. So you have to be able to adjust in order to be able to accommodate uh, the culture, the value, the tradition of any country that you reside in. Wow. So keep the comments coming. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.